Helen Winters pulled her coat tightly around her shoulders as the chilly evening wind whipped through the quiet streets of the suburban neighborhood she had called home for nearly forty years. At sixty-five, Helen was used to the silence, the stillness of her day since her husband Richard passed away five years ago. She lived a quiet, structured life now, keeping her small house in perfect order, tending to her garden and taking regular walks to the grocery store. Her life was predictable, sometimes too predictable. As she made her way back from the store, her arms heavy with bags, something unusual caught her eye. On the sidewalk, huddled against the cold and clutching a thin blanket, sat a young woman. Her face was pale, framed by messy, unkempt hair, and she looked utterly exhausted. She was visibly pregnant her swollen belly prominent against her frail body, and her eyes held a mixture of fear and despair. Helen slowed her pace, her heart tugging at the sight. For a moment she debated whether to stop. It wasn't every day she came across someone like this, homeless, pregnant, and so young. Should she intervene? Was it even safe? Her mind raced through all the possibilities, but then the thought of her own childless life crept in, reminding her of the emptiness that had lingered for so long. She couldn't just walk by. Taking a deep breath, Helen approached the young woman cautiously. Are you all right, dear? She asked gently, her voice soft but filled with concern. The woman looked up, startled by the sudden attention. She seemed to shrink back as if expecting Helen to scold or shoo her away. I'm... I'm fine, the young woman stammered, though her voice lacked conviction. She looked cold, hungry and too exhausted to be fine. Helen wasn't convinced. It's awfully cold out tonight. How long have you been sitting here? she asked, crouching down to meet the young woman's eyes. The woman didn't respond at first, her eyes flickering nervously to the empty street around them. Helen noticed the way she glanced over her shoulder, as if expecting someone or something to appear at any moment. My name is Helen, she said, trying a different approach. I live just a few blocks away. If you want, you could come with me. I could give you something warm to eat, maybe a place to sleep for the night. The woman hesitated, her distrust evident in the way she pulled the blanket tighter around her shoulders. She opened her mouth to speak but stopped, as if unsure whether she could trust this stranger who had appeared so suddenly in her life. Her eyes darted around again, filled with anxiety. Helen waited patiently, sensing the internal battle this young woman was facing. There was something in her eyes, an unspoken fear that Helen couldn't quite place, but it made her more determined to help. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the young woman whispered, I don't want to be any trouble. It's no trouble at all, Helen reassured her. I'd feel better knowing you're somewhere warm, especially with a baby on the way. She glanced meaningfully at the woman's stomach her concern deepening. The young woman's guard softened just a little. I'm Sarah, she said quietly, and thank you. Relief washed over Helen as Sarah slowly rose to her feet, though it was clear she was in pain. The weight of her pregnancy, combined with what was likely a long time spent on the cold ground, made her movement stiff and slow. Helen offered her arm for support, and together they made their way to Helen's house. As they walked, Helen couldn't help but wonder how Sarah had ended up like this. Homeless, alone, and pregnant. What had brought her to such a desperate situation? Helen didn't ask, not yet. It was too soon, and she didn't want to overwhelm her. The important thing was getting Sarah safe for now. When they reached Helen's house, Sarah hesitated again at the doorstep, as though crossing into someone's home was a step too far, a trust she wasn't sure she was ready to give. But Helen smiled warmly, opening the door and ushering her inside. The warmth of the house enveloped them both, a stark contrast to the bitter cold outside. Helen guided Sarah to the small kitchen and set her grocery bags down. You sit down, dear, she said, gesturing toward the worn but comfortable kitchen chair. I'll make us some tea and get you something to eat. Sarah sank into the chair, visibly relieved to be off her feet. As Helen busied herself preparing a simple meal, she couldn't help but glance back at her guest. Sarah looked even more fragile in the soft glow of the kitchen light, her face drawn, her eyes haunted by something Helen couldn't quite place. 
But beyond the weariness, there was also something else. Fear. Helen brought over a steaming cup of tea and a plate of warm soup. Sarah accepted them gratefully, her hands trembling slightly as she brought the cup to her lips. For a few minutes they sat in silence, the only sound the soft clinking of the spoon as Sarah ate. Finally, Helen spoke. You don't have to tell me anything you're not ready to, she said gently, but I want you to know that you're safe here. No one's going to hurt you. Sarah's eyes welled with tears at those words, and for a moment Helen thought she might say something, but instead Sarah just nodded, her throat tight with emotion. Helen didn't push. She knew trust took time, especially for someone who had clearly been through so much. But there was a weight in the air, an unspoken story that hovered between them. Later that night, as Helen set up a spare room for Sarah, she couldn't shake the nagging feeling that there was more to Sarah's situation than just homelessness. There was something, or someone, she was running from. Helen had seen the way Sarah had looked over her shoulder, the way her body tensed every time a car passed by the house. It wasn't just the hardships of the street that haunted her, it was something far darker. Helen lay in bed that night, her mind spinning with questions. Who was Sarah really running from? And what kind of danger had followed her here? As she drifted into a restless sleep, Helen had no idea that her simple act of kindness was about to plunge her into a world far more complicated and dangerous than she could ever have imagined. The morning light filtered through the curtains, casting a soft glow over Helen's modest kitchen. The comforting scent of freshly brewed coffee filled the air as Helen stood by the stove stirring oatmeal. She glanced toward the hallway, listening for any sign of Sarah waking up. It had been a long, quiet night after their brief conversation, and Helen had given Sarah the space to rest, hoping she'd feel more settled by morning. As if on cue, Sarah appeared in the doorway, her expression still cautious but softened by the promise of warmth and safety. She was dressed in the same worn clothes from the day before, her face pale and weary, but there was a hint of relief in her eyes. Helen smiled warmly and gestured toward the table. Good morning, dear. I made some breakfast. Nothing fancy, but it'll keep you going, Helen said, placing a bowl of oatmeal and a slice of toast in front of Sarah. Sarah sat down slowly, wrapping her hands around the cup of tea Helen had prepared for her. For a few moments neither of them spoke, the silence filled only by the quiet clinking of silverware as Sarah began to eat. Thank you, Sarah murmured, her voice barely audible. Helen sat down across from her, offering a reassuring smile. You don't have to thank me. I'm just glad you're here safe. The young woman's defences, though still present, seemed to ease just a little in the presence of Helen's warmth. After all, it had been so long since anyone had shown her genuine kindness. She didn't quite know how to accept it yet. As the meal progressed, Helen began sharing bits of her own life, hoping to create a connection. She told Sarah about Richard, her late husband, and how they had spent decades together in this very house. We were married for 42 years, Helen said with a nostalgic smile. I was a schoolteacher, and Richard was an accountant. We didn't have children of our own, though we tried. Her voice softened at that admission, a quiet sadness lingering in her words. Sarah, still hesitant, looked up from her plate. I'm sorry, she said quietly, the words simple but sincere. It's all right, Helen replied, her gaze softening. Life doesn't always go the way we plan, but we made the best of it. Richard and I loved each other dearly, and that was enough. There was a pause and then Sarah almost imperceptibly began to open up. I never knew my dad, she said softly. It was just my mom and me, but she... she wasn't really around either. Her words were laced with a deep-seated hurt, though she kept her emotions carefully guarded. I left home when I was seventeen, I didn't have much of a choice. Helen sensed that Sarah was holding something back, but she didn't push. The fact that Sarah had shared anything at all felt like progress. You've had it hard, haven't you? Helen asked gently. Sarah nodded, her eyes dropping to her lap. You could say that. After a few moments of silence, Helen reached out a hand, offering comfort. 
You don't have to tell me everything, Sarah, but I want you to know that you're welcome to stay here as long as you need. You don't have to go back out there just yet. Sarah hesitated, her expression conflicted. I don't want to be a burden, Helen. I, I don't want to bring you into any trouble. Trouble, Helen repeated, her brow furrowing slightly. What kind of trouble, dear? Sarah stiffened, realizing she had said too much. Her hands tightened around her mug, and her eyes darted toward the window as if she expected someone to be watching. It's nothing, she said quickly. I just mean, things get complicated. Helen noticed how Sarah's entire demeanor shifted at the mention of trouble. The young woman, who had begun to relax just moments ago, now looked tense, as if she was bracing for something. Helen decided to leave it for now, sensing that pressing too hard would only push Sarah further away. You're not a burden, Helen said softly. You can stay for a few days, at least until we figure something out for you and the baby. Sarah offered a faint grateful smile, but her eyes remained troubled. Later that evening the unease in the air lingered. After a quiet dinner, Helen sat by the fireplace, knitting as Sarah rested on the couch lost in thought. The television played softly in the background, but Sarah's attention was elsewhere. Every so often she would glance at the windows or the front door, her body tensing at the slightest noise. Helen watched her closely, trying to understand the fear that clearly gripped the young woman. Sarah was constantly on edge, and it wasn't just the uncertainty of being homeless or pregnant. It was something deeper, something darker. At one point, Helen saw Sarah pull out a phone from her bag, a cheap, outdated model. She turned it on, her fingers trembling slightly as she glanced at the screen. But after just a few seconds, Sarah quickly turned it off again, her expression clouded with anxiety. Helen didn't ask, but she couldn't ignore the tension radiating from Sarah. As the night wore on, Helen retired to her room, giving Sarah space to sleep in the guest bedroom. The house was quiet, save for the occasional creak of the floorboards. Helen had just begun to drift off when she was startled by the sound of muffled voices coming from the hall. She quietly got out of bed and made her way to the door, pausing just outside Sarah's room. Through the crack she could hear Sarah speaking in hushed, urgent tones on the phone. I told you not to call me, Sarah whispered, her voice filled with panic. I can't. No, they'll find me if I... There was a long pause followed by a choked sob. Please don't let them find me. Helen's heart raced as she pressed her ear closer, her mind filling with questions. Who was Sarah talking to, and more importantly, who was she so terrified of? Before she could make sense of what she had heard, the conversation ended, and silence filled the room once more. Helen stood frozen in the hallway, her pulse quickening. Whatever Sarah was running from, it wasn't just the hardships of life on the streets. Someone, or something, was after her. And Helen realized with a sinking feeling that she had only scratched the surface of the danger Sarah was in. The morning after Helen overheard Sarah's late-night phone call, the air in the house felt heavier. Helen could sense that Sarah was retreating back into her shell, the tension of the conversation lingering in every move she made. As much as Helen wanted to give Sarah the space to come forward on her own, she couldn't shake the fear that something was terribly wrong. The mystery of Sarah's past, and whoever she was so afraid of, had started to weigh on Helen's mind. After breakfast, Helen finally decided that enough was enough. She couldn't sit by idly, not when Sarah was clearly in some kind of danger. Gently, she approached Sarah, who sat on the couch, nervously picking at the edge of a blanket. Helen sat beside her, her voice soft but firm. Sarah, she began, I heard you on the phone last night. You sounded scared. You don't have to tell me everything, but I need to know what's going on if I'm going to help you. Who's after you? Sarah froze, her eyes widening in shock. For a moment, she didn't speak, her face pale as if all the blood had drained from it. Her hands trembled, and she avoided Helen's gaze. But after a long silence, her shoulders sagged and she let out a shaky breath. I didn't mean for you to hear that, Sarah whispered, her voice cracking with emotion. I thought I could handle it on my own, but... I can't. Not anymore. Helen reached out, placing a comforting hand on Sarah's knee. You don't have to handle it alone, not anymore. Whatever it is, we can face it together. 
Sarah's lips trembled as her eyes filled with tears. She stared at the floor for what seemed like an eternity before finally speaking, her voice barely above a whisper. I was with someone, a man. His name is Derek. At first he was charming, sweet. He made me feel like I mattered. Her voice cracked as she continued. But once I moved in with him, everything changed. He controlled everything, what I wore, who I spoke to, even when I could leave the house. And if I disobeyed him, he... Sarah swallowed hard, her voice thick with emotion. He hit me. Helen's heart clenched at those words, a surge of anger rising in her chest. She squeezed Sarah's hand, silently urging her to continue. When I found out I was pregnant, Sarah continued, I thought maybe it would change him. Maybe he'd soften, but it only made things worse. He didn't want the baby, said it would ruin everything. That's when I knew I had to leave. I had to get out before something happened to me or to my child. Tears streamed down Sarah's face as she relived the nightmare of her past. I've been running ever since, she whispered. I thought I'd gotten away, but Derek has connections. He's part of a... a criminal group. I don't even know the full extent of it, but I've seen enough to know how dangerous he is, and now he's looking for me. He won't stop until he finds me. Helen's chest tightened as she listened, a mixture of fear and compassion swirling inside her. She had feared something like this, some dark, terrible secret lurking beneath Sarah's quiet exterior, but hearing it confirmed made it all too real. This young woman, alone and pregnant, had been running for her life, hiding from a man who would stop at nothing to control her. Sarah wiped at her eyes with the back of her hand, looking defeated. I don't want to put you in danger, Helen. I thought if I stayed hidden long enough, maybe he'd give up. But he hasn't. I don't know what to do anymore. Helen sat quietly, processing the weight of what she had just heard. Fear for her own safety crept in, but it was quickly overtaken by something stronger, a deep, maternal instinct to protect Sarah. In that moment, Helen saw Sarah as more than just a stranger who needed help. She saw her as the daughter she never had, a vulnerable young woman in desperate need of someone to stand by her. You don't have to run anymore, Helen said firmly, her voice filled with quiet determination. We'll figure this out together. You're not alone, Sarah. Not anymore. Sarah looked up, her eyes filled with gratitude and disbelief. Why are you doing this? Why would you risk yourself for me? Helen smiled softly, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. Because I see you, Sarah. I see how much you've been through, and because everyone deserves a second chance, a safe place to start over. Over the next few days, Helen and Sarah began working together to create a plan. Helen, ever the practical former schoolteacher, started researching shelters, legal aid, and even police protection. But every time the topic of involving the authorities came up, Sarah would grow anxious, insisting that Derek had connections that made it too dangerous. Helen had her doubts, but respected Sarah's fears. For now, they would focus on preparing for the baby's arrival and staying safe. One afternoon, they ventured out to buy some essential baby supplies. Helen insisted they go to a small local store where they were less likely to be recognized. As they browsed through baby clothes and blankets, Helen noticed that Sarah seemed more relaxed than she had been in days. It was a small glimpse of the life she could have. A life free from fear. But just as they were about to leave the store, something caught Helen's attention. Across the street, standing by a parked car, was a man watching them intently. He was tall, with dark hair and a menacing presence that sent a chill down Helen's spine. His gaze wasn't casual. He was studying them. Helen's heart raced, her mind spinning as she quickly glanced at Sarah, who hadn't noticed the man yet. She didn't want to alarm her, but every instinct told her this was no coincidence. The man's eyes never left them and the tension in the air was palpable. Helen gently touched Sarah's arm, her voice low and urgent. We need to leave. Now. Sarah frowned, confused. Why? What's wrong? Don't look. Helen whispered but I think someone's watching us. Sarah's face drained of color, her breath quickening as she instinctively looked toward the street. When she saw the man, her hand flew to her mouth, her eyes wide with terror. It's him, Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. It's Derek. Tss. Panic surged through both women as they hurried out of the store, their hearts pounding with fear. 
Helen quickly ushered Sarah into her car, her mind racing. They drove in silence, Helen glancing in the rearview mirror every few seconds to make sure they weren't being followed. When they finally reached the safety of Helen's home, Sarah collapsed into a chair, her hands shaking uncontrollably. He found me, she whispered, her voice hollow with despair. He's going to come after me. Helen stood frozen for a moment, her mind grappling with the terrifying reality they now faced. Derek had found Sarah, and there was no telling what he would do next. But one thing was certain. Helen wasn't going to let him win. The days that followed their encounter with Derek were a blur of tension and fear. Sarah's anxiety had escalated to the point where she could barely sleep or eat. She constantly glanced out the windows, certain that Derek or one of his men was lurking nearby. The warm, safe cocoon Helen had created for her had been shattered, replaced by an overwhelming sense of dread. One evening, after another sleepless night of pacing and peering through the curtains, Sarah approached Helen in the kitchen, her face pale and drawn. Helen, I can't stay here anymore, she whispered, her voice shaky. I'm putting you in danger. Derek, he's not going to stop. I need to leave before something terrible happens to you. Helen, who had been stirring a pot of soup, turned to face Sarah with a resolute expression. You're not going anywhere, she said firmly. I won't let you run anymore. We're in this together, Sarah. We need to come up with a plan, not flee in panic. But you don't understand, Sarah argued, her hands trembling as she wrung them together. Derek isn't just some jealous ex. He's part of a criminal group, a dangerous one. They deal in drugs, money laundering, and worse. He has people who can find me anywhere. If I stay here, you're at risk too. I don't want to drag you into this mess. Helen's heart sank at the weight of Sarah's revelation. The fear in Sarah's eyes wasn't just paranoia. It was rooted in something real and terrifying. But Helen had made up her mind. She couldn't turn her back on Sarah. Not now. Not when she was so vulnerable. I know it's dangerous. Helen said softly, sitting down at the kitchen table and motioning for Sarah to join her. But running won't solve anything. You've been running for months, haven't you? And he still found you. You can't keep living like this, constantly looking over your shoulder waiting for him to catch up. Tears welled in Sarah's eyes as she nodded, her resolve crumbling. I don't know what else to do, she admitted, her voice breaking. I'm so tired, Helen, tired of being afraid all the time, tired of running. Helen reached out and took Sarah's hand in hers. We'll figure this out, together. But we have to be smart about it. Have you thought about going to the police? Sarah recoiled at the suggestion, her face tightening with fear. The police can't help, she said quickly. Derek has people on the inside. He's paid off officers before to cover up things. If we go to them, it could backfire. I'd be putting us in more danger. Helen fell silent, absorbing the gravity of Sarah's words. The more she learned about Derek and the people he was involved with, the clearer it became why Sarah had been so terrified. But at the same time, Helen knew they couldn't just sit and wait for the inevitable. They had to act, and they had to do it soon. That evening, as they sat together in the living room, Sarah asked Helen a question she hadn't dared to ask before. Why are you doing this for me? Why are you risking so much to help someone you barely know? Helen paused, her gaze softening as memories she had long buried began to surface. I suppose it's because you remind me of myself in a way, she said quietly. Years ago, my husband and I tried to adopt a child. We couldn't have children of our own, so we went through the long, grueling process of adoption. We got so close, Sarah, so close to bringing home a little girl, but the system was corrupt. We found out that money had changed hands and the agency had decided to give the child to another family. After that, I couldn't bring myself to try again. Helen's voice grew thick with emotion as she continued. I wanted so badly to be a mother, but life had other plans. When my husband died, I was left with nothing but memories and a hollow ache for the family I never had. But then you showed up on that street and I, I just knew I couldn't turn away. You and your baby, you're a second chance for me. A chance to protect someone who needs me, just like I needed that little girl so many years ago. Sarah stared at Helen, her eyes brimming with tears. I didn't know, she whispered, her voice heavy with emotion. I had no idea. 
You don't have to carry this burden alone anymore, Helen said softly, squeezing Sarah's hand. We'll find a way out of this, I promise. You're like the daughter I never had, and I won't let anything happen to you. That night, as they both lay in bed, exhaustion finally overtaking them, Helen woke to the sound of something strange. A soft creak, the unmistakable sound of a door opening. At first, she thought it might be Sarah, unable to sleep and pacing the house again. But then she heard the distinct shuffle of heavy footsteps in the hallway. Her heart lurched. Someone was in the house. Panic surged through her veins as she quietly slipped out of bed, grabbing the phone from her nightstand. She tiptoed to Sarah's room and gently shook her awake, whispering frantically, Sarah, wake up. Someone's inside. Sarah's eyes flew open and in an instant she was alert, her fear evident. Derek, she mouthed, her face drained of all color. Helen's mind raced. They couldn't stay here. They needed to escape. But how? They could hear the intruder moving around downstairs, footsteps heavy and deliberate, as if searching for something or someone. Without making a sound, Helen motioned for Sarah to follow her. They crept down the hall to the back door, their hearts pounding in their chests. Helen's hands trembled as she fumbled with the lock, trying to keep quiet, but the urgency of the situation made her movements clumsy. Just as they slipped out into the cold night air, a loud crash came from inside the house, a door being kicked open. Sarah stifled a gasp, and they both broke into a run, heading for the wooded area behind Helen's house. Their breath came in ragged gasps, the adrenaline coursing through their veins. They reached a small clearing and hid behind a cluster of trees, trying to catch their breath. Sarah clutched her stomach, her face twisted in pain and fear. He's here, Helen, Sarah whispered, her voice barely audible. He found us. Helen's mind spun as she looked around, desperately trying to think of their next move. They couldn't go back to the house, and they couldn't stay in the open for long. But just as she was about to suggest they find a nearby motel or shelter, the sound of footsteps crunching through the underbrush reached her ears. Whoever had broken into the house was now outside, searching for them. Helen's heart raced, but she steeled herself. She wasn't going to let Derek win. She wasn't going to let Sarah lose everything she had fought so hard to protect. We'll keep moving, Helen whispered fiercely. We won't let him catch us. Not tonight. With that, they began their journey into the dark, their fear pushing them forward. They had no idea where they were going, but one thing was certain. They had to stay one step ahead of the man hunting them down. The days following their desperate escape from Helen's home were a blur of fear, exhaustion and constant movement. Helen and Sarah found themselves in a pattern of evasion, moving from shelter to motel, never staying long enough for anyone to remember their faces. The fear that Derek might catch up with them hung over their heads like a storm cloud, pushing them to keep going. Helen had dipped into her life savings to fund their escape, paying for cheap rooms and meals, hoping that her dwindling resources would last long enough for them to find a solution. She was determined to keep Sarah safe. But with each passing day, the weight of the situation became more unbearable. Sarah's pregnancy was nearing its end and her body was growing weaker from the stress and constant movement. One morning, as they checked into yet another rundown motel in a small town, Sarah collapsed onto the bed, her face pale and drawn. I don't know how much longer I can keep going like this, she admitted, her voice barely a whisper. I'm so tired, Helen. The baby, I think it's coming soon. Helen knelt beside Sarah, her heart breaking at the sight of the young woman's exhaustion. Sarah had been through so much, and now her body was reaching its limits. Helen knew they couldn't keep running forever, but the fear of Derek finding them was still too real. I know, Helen said softly, brushing a strand of Sarah's hair from her forehead. But we'll get through this. We just need to hang on a little longer. I'll figure something out. Helen's transformation from a lonely, cautious widow to a fierce protector had been gradual, but now it was complete. The fear that had once gripped her heart had been replaced by a fierce determination. Sarah and the baby had become her purpose, and she would do whatever it took to keep them safe, even if it meant putting herself in danger. But as the days dragged on and Sarah's condition worsened, Helen realized they couldn't keep running. 
The baby would arrive soon, and they needed a plan. Sitting on the edge of the motel bed, Helen studied Sarah's face, now marked by dark circles and stress. Sarah's fear had etched deep lines into her young features, but her spirit remained unbroken. We have to stop, Helen finally said, her voice firm. We can't keep running like this. You need medical attention, and we need a safe place to stay. Maybe it's time to involve someone who can help. Sarah's eyes widened in fear. The police? No, Helen. You don't know Derek like I do. He has people everywhere. What if he finds out where we are through them? I'm not suggesting we go to the police, Helen replied, thinking hard. But maybe there's another way. I have an old friend. He's a retired police officer. He knew my husband and I trust him. If anyone can help us, it's him. He might know a way to keep us safe without tipping Derek off. Sarah hesitated, biting her lip as she considered Helen's suggestion. The idea of trusting anyone was terrifying, but they were running out of options, and her body was growing weaker by the day. Okay, she finally agreed, but we have to be careful. No one can know where we are. Helen nodded, relieved that Sarah had agreed. She quickly made the call to her old friend, explaining their situation in as much detail as she could without giving away too much. The man, Bill, had been a close friend of her late husband, and he immediately offered to help. He promised to meet them the next day at a nearby diner where they could talk in person and figure out their next move. For the first time in weeks, Helen felt a glimmer of hope. The following morning, as they prepared to leave the motel and meet Bill. Sarah's anxiety was palpable. She paced back and forth, glancing out the window every few minutes, her hands resting protectively on her swollen belly. What if Derek's already found us? She asked, her voice trembling. What if this is a trap? Helen placed a reassuring hand on Sarah's shoulder. We're going to be okay, she said, trying to sound more confident than she felt. Bill will help us. He won't let anything happen to you. But as they packed their things and prepared to leave the motel, a deep sense of unease settled over Helen. Something didn't feel right. She couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. They left the room and walked towards the car, their footsteps echoing in the eerily quiet parking lot. Helen glanced around, her heart pounding in her chest, but there was no sign of anyone following them. Still, the feeling of dread lingered, gnawing at her. As they approached the car, Helen fumbled with the keys, her hands shaking slightly. Just as she unlocked the door, she heard the sound of a car engine roaring to life behind them. She turned, her blood running cold as she saw a black SUV speeding towards them. Sarah, get in the car! Helen shouted, her voice filled with panic. But it was too late. The SUV screeched to a halt, and before they could react, Derek emerged from the driver's seat, his face twisted with anger. Two other men stepped out of the vehicle, their expressions cold and menacing. Sarah froze, her eyes wide with terror. No, she whispered, her voice breaking. No, not now. Derek strode towards them, his eyes locked on Sarah. You thought you could run from me, he snarled, his voice filled with rage. You thought I wouldn't find you. Helen moved in front of Sarah, her heart racing as she stood between the young woman and her ex. Stay away from her, she said, her voice trembling but firm. You're not taking her or the baby. Derek sneered, taking a step closer. And who do you think you are, old woman? You're going to protect her? You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. As the tension escalated, Sarah clutched her stomach, gasping in pain. Helen. It's happening, she whispered, her face pale with fear. The baby, it's coming. Panic surged through Helen. Sarah was going into labor and they were trapped with no way out. Desperation coursed through her as she tried to think of a way to protect Sarah and the baby. But before she could act, the situation took an unexpected turn. From the corner of the parking lot, another car pulled up. The driver's door swung open and Bill, Helen's old friend, stepped out, his face grim and determined. He was followed by two uniformed police officers. Back off, Derek, Bill called out, his voice steady and commanding. It's over. Derek's expression shifted from rage to disbelief as he saw the police officers approaching. He took a step back, realizing he was outnumbered. You can't do this, he hissed, his eyes narrowing. She's mine. 
Not anymore, Bill replied calmly, signalling the officers to move in. It's over, Derek. You're done. As the officers restrained Derek and his men, Helen rushed to Sarah's side, helping her into the car. Sarah was breathing heavily, her face contorted with pain, but she managed a weak smile through her tears. We did it, she whispered. We're safe. Helen held her tightly, relief flooding through her as the nightmare finally came to an end. But the journey wasn't over yet. The baby was coming, and there was still a new beginning waiting for them, one filled with hope, love, and the promise of a future they had fought so hard to protect. The small motel room was filled with the sound of Sarah's laboured breathing, and Helen could feel the tension in the air growing thicker by the second. The realisation that Sarah's labour had started hit Helen hard. They were cornered, vulnerable, and there was no time left. Outside, the cold glare of headlights cast long shadows across the room's thin curtains, and Helen's heart pounded with fear. Derek had found them, there was no doubt in her mind. His SUV was parked right outside, and the faint sound of car doors slamming confirmed her worst fears. Helen! Sarah gasped, clutching her belly in pain as she struggled to sit up on the bed. It's happening, the baby's coming, I... I can't do this. You can, Helen whispered, though her own voice trembled. She squeezed Sarah's hand, trying to remain calm. We're going to get through this, I promise. But even as she said the words, Helen's mind raced. They were trapped. Derek was out there, and any moment he'd burst through the door with his men, and Sarah, already in labour, had no strength left to run. Helen's fear mixed with a rising determination. I have to protect her, she thought. I can't let him take her or the baby. As Helen helped Sarah breathe through the contractions, the sound of heavy footsteps echoed down the motel hallway. It was only a matter of time before Derek broke in. Stay calm, Sarah, Helen whispered, though her own fear was almost suffocating. She glanced around the room, desperate for any means of defence. The only thing she had was her phone. Maybe I can call for help. But no. They were in a remote part of town, and she feared any response would come too late. Suddenly, the door rattled as someone tried the handle. A voice from outside barked, Open the door, Helen. I know you're in there. It was Derek. Helen felt her heart seize, but she couldn't let Sarah see her panic. Stay quiet, she whispered, motioning for Sarah to lie still. But Sarah's pained groans betrayed them. Another contraction hit and her moan slipped out before she could stop it. Sarah, I know you're in there. Derek's voice was louder now, filled with menace. The door shook violently as he pounded on it. You can't hide from me anymore. Helen quickly locked the door, bracing her back against it as the pounding grew more forceful. She could hear Derek's men moving around outside, probably trying to block any possible escape routes. This is it, Sarah whimpered, her face pale with pain and fear. He's going to take me. He's going to take my baby. Helen's mind raced, but there was nothing left to do. Her phone was in her hand, but she hadn't had time to call anyone. Even if she could, it was too late for help to arrive in time. Derek was too close. Suddenly, amidst the panic, the pounding on the door stopped. A tense, eerie silence fell over the room and for a moment, Helen's heart sank. What's happening now? Then out of the silence came the loud crack of wood splintering. Derek had broken the lock, and the door swung open violently, slamming against the wall. There he stood, his face twisted with rage, his eyes locking immediately onto Sarah. You thought you could run from me, he snarled, stepping into the room with two of his men following closely behind. His gaze flickered to Helen, but she didn't back down. Instead, she stood between him and Sarah, her body shaking but resolute. Get out of the way, old lady. Derek growled, advancing toward them. This has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me, Helen replied, her voice steady despite the terror coursing through her veins. You're not taking her. You're not taking her baby. Derek sneered, moving closer. What are you going to do? You're just an old woman. You can't stop me. But just as Derek stepped forward, something unexpected happened. A car screeched to a halt outside the motel, and before Derek could react, a figure stepped into the doorway. It was a tall man with a weathered face, his eyes sharp and filled with authority. 
Step back, Derek, the man said calmly, but his voice carried the weight of a threat. It's over. Derek turned in shock, his face twisting in confusion and anger. Who the hell are you? The man stepped forward, revealing a badge clipped to his belt. I'm Bill, retired police officer, and an old friend of Helen's husband. He glanced at Helen, giving her a brief nod. I've been keeping an eye on things. Helen's eyes widened in surprise and relief. Bill had come just in time. She had reached out to him, but she hadn't expected him to arrive so soon. He must have been tracking Derek for some time, understanding the danger Helen and Sarah were in. Derek's expression shifted from anger to panic as he realized the situation had changed. His men exchanged nervous glances, backing away slowly. I don't care who you are, Derek spat. This is none of your business. Bill remained calm, but his voice hardened. It became my business the moment you started hunting down a pregnant woman and her baby. Now, you have two choices. Leave quietly, or I'll make sure you leave in handcuffs. The two police officers who had arrived with Bill stepped forward, their hands on their holstered weapons. Derek's bravado faltered as he glanced between Bill and his men. He was outnumbered, and for the first time he seemed to realize it. You're making a mistake, Derek hissed, but there was no strength left in his words. You already made yours, Bill replied. With no other options, Derek and his men slowly backed away, retreating out of the motel room and into the night. As they disappeared, Bill turned to Helen and Sarah, his face softening with concern. Are you two all right? He asked, stepping inside. But before Helen could respond, Sarah let out a sharp cry of pain, clutching her belly. The baby is, is coming, she gasped, her face contorting in agony. Without hesitation, Bill pulled out his phone and called for an ambulance. Help's on the way, he said, his voice reassuring. Hang in there, Sarah. You're going to be all right. Hours later, in the quiet of a hospital room, the tension that had once gripped Helen and Sarah had finally dissolved. The sterile smell of the room, the soft beeping of monitors, and the steady breathing of the newborn baby in Sarah's arms were all that remained. Sarah had given birth to a healthy baby boy, a beautiful, fragile little life that now slept peacefully in her arms. Helen sat beside her, watching with tears in her eyes, as Sarah cradled the baby close to her chest. It's over, Sarah whispered, her voice filled with awe and exhaustion. He's finally here. Helen reached out and gently stroked the baby's tiny hand. He's beautiful, she said, her heart swelling with emotion. For the first time in weeks, she felt a deep sense of peace. Bill had stayed by their side throughout the entire ordeal, ensuring their safety and helping to finalize Derek's arrest. The danger was gone, and Derek was now in police custody facing charges for his crimes. Sarah and her baby were safe. But as Helen sat there watching Sarah with her newborn son, she realized that something else had changed. She had found a family in the most unexpected way. She had been a lonely widow, but now she had a new purpose, a new life. She had saved Sarah, but in a way, Sarah had saved her too. As the sun began to rise outside the hospital window, Helen smiled, knowing that this was only the beginning of a new, hopeful chapter for all of them. The days following the birth of Sarah's baby, whom she named Michael, were a whirlwind of emotions and adjustments. After being discharged from the hospital, Sarah and Helen returned to Helen's quiet suburban home, but this time, the house didn't feel empty anymore. There was new life within its walls, tiny cries from the baby in the early hours, soft lullabies sung by Sarah, and the warm presence of a family forming in the most unexpected way. For the first time in years, Helen felt something she hadn't known she was missing, a sense of belonging, a renewed purpose. The house, once a quiet and lonely space, now hummed with laughter and new memories. Sarah, though still recovering from the trauma of her past, seemed to glow with the presence of her newborn son. There was a peace in her eyes that hadn't been there before, and it was clear she felt safe for the first time in a long while. One evening, after putting Michael to sleep in the small crib Helen had set up in the guest room, Sarah and Helen sat together in the living room, 
A soft fire crackled in the hearth, casting a warm glow on their faces. Helen sipped her tea, watching Sarah quietly. You know, this place already feels like home, Sarah said softly, her eyes glancing around the cosy room. I never thought I'd feel safe again. Helen smiled, her heart swelling with affection for the young woman sitting across from her. You and Michael deserve a real home, she said gently, a place where you can both start fresh. A comfortable silence fell between them for a moment before Helen spoke again, this time with more weight in her voice. Sarah, I've been thinking about something. Sarah turned to her, curiosity flickering in her tired eyes. You and Michael, Helen began, her voice steady. I want you both to stay here, not just for now but permanently. I've been alone for too long and I've come to realize that this, this is what I've been missing. I want to adopt you, Sarah. Both you and Michael. I want us to be a family. Sarah's eyes widened in surprise. Adopt us, she echoed, her voice barely above a whisper. Yes, Helen nodded, tears forming in her eyes. I've always dreamed of having a family, but I never got the chance. My husband and I, Eva, we tried to adopt, but it didn't work out, and I buried that dream a long time ago. But now, with you and Michael here, it feels like life is giving me a second chance. I want to be there for you like a mother should. I want to give you both the stability and love you deserve. Tears welled up in Sarah's eyes, and for a moment she was speechless. No one had ever offered her something like this before, something so genuine and selfless. She had spent so much of her life running, afraid and alone, and the idea of being part of a family, of being truly loved and cared for, seemed almost too good to be true. But, are you sure? Sarah finally asked, her voice trembling. I mean I've brought so much chaos into your life. You don't have to... Helen reached out and took Sarah's hand, her grip firm but gentle. I'm absolutely sure, she said with conviction. You and Michael are already a part of my life. I don't want to go back to the way things were before. This is what I want more than anything. Sarah's tears spilled over, and she nodded, her heart too full for words. She knew in that moment that Helen was offering her something she had never truly known, unconditional love. The adoption process took time, but Helen's determination and Sarah's willingness made it happen. As the months passed, they worked together to build a new life, one filled with hope and healing. Helen legally became Sarah's guardian, and more importantly, a mother figure to both her and little Michael. The house, once echoing with silence, was now filled with the laughter of a growing baby and the steady bond of two women who had found solace in each other's company. Sarah, no longer looking over her shoulder, began to rebuild her life. With Helen's support, she enrolled in online courses to finish her education, something she had been forced to abandon when her relationship with Derek took over her life. Slowly but surely, she started to see a future for herself and her son, one that wasn't marred by fear and violence, but rather shaped by the love and care she received from Helen. For Helen, the transformation was equally profound. She had spent so many years living in the shadows of her past grief, feeling as though her purpose had faded with the loss of her husband and the failure of her adoption dreams. But now, with Sarah and Michael, she had found a new chapter a new beginning. Every time she held Michael, feeding him or rocking him to sleep, she felt the deep unspoken joy of motherhood, a dream she thought she had lost forever. In Sarah she saw not only a young woman in need, but also the daughter she never had, someone she could guide and love. One evening as they sat together on the porch watching Michael toddle across the yard with clumsy little steps, Sarah turned to Helen, her expression soft with gratitude. I never thought I'd be happy again, Sarah said quietly. But you, you've given me and Michael everything. I don't know how to thank you. Helen smiled, her heart full. You've already given me the greatest gift, Sarah, she replied. I didn't know it, but you and Michael are the family I've been waiting for all along. Sarah's eyes shimmered with tears and she nodded. I guess life has a funny way of bringing people together, doesn't it? Helen chuckled softly. 
Yes, it does. And sometimes it gives us exactly what we need when we least expect it. The unexpected twist for Helen had been not just in becoming a mother figure again, but in discovering that through this act of kindness and love, she had healed the old wounds she had carried for so long. In helping Sarah, she had helped herself too. As the sun set, casting a golden glow over the yard, Helen felt a peace settle over her. A peace that came from knowing she had created a new life for herself, for Sarah and for little Michael. They were a family now, not by blood but by choice. And that choice had changed all of their lives for the better.